you play lots of instruments, but am I right you've learnt a new instrument in lockdown? Yes, I did. Um, a couple of things. Yeah, I learned a couple of instruments. I, I sort of really got to grips with the didgeridoo and... Um, I, um, <laughs> Are you serious? Do you yes, own the didgeridoo? I do own the didgeridoo, and um, uh, a lot, I got a lot of complaints, actually, from neighbours. Um, <laughs> people thought there was a swarm of bees. Uh, <laughs> but um, I, I actually also have taught... I've been teaching myself this instrument here, which is... Um, uh, it's, it, it's something I've, I've wanted to play for a long time. I play it occasionally, you know, um, but it's a, it's a mandola. And it's like a mandolin, but it's a deeper sound. It makes a lovely sort of, like, a... A deeper sound. I'll give you a little... Oh, yeah. A, I'll yeah. give you a demo. Oh, yeah. Um, I've written, actually... I've been practising with an Irish reel, so I don't know if you... Uh, this brings back any memories. For... I'll, I'll start Guess it. Guess it'll I'll... be on our feet. I still... Jason, you can call me Jason. Can I? OK, Jason, Jason. Because looking at yourself and Bill, I sort of think it's a shame Aquaman's finished filming, because I don't think... You would be quite good as Aquaman's dad. Yes. <laughs> I think so, yeah. This is you in a few years. <laughs> <laughs> yes! <laughs> yeah. Sort of like an older Aquaman. Yeah, well, I don't get in the water so much these days. <laughs> No, we found a picture. We found a picture, and it looks like you're auditioning for Aquaman or Aquadad. Oh, yeah. There oh. you are. <laughs> what is that? That's a mace. It's a ceremonial thing that's used for uh, ceremonies, you know. And okay. <laughs> it was uh, when I, w I received my honorary doctorate from the University of Bath. Hello. Yes. Oh. Hello, Dr. Bailey. From now on, oh. please. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, that's the thing. They they you have to they carry it around. See, look, I'm wearing a hat. <laughs> it's real. Uh, and ladies and gentlemen, can we just say how pleased we are that Bill's here at all? Because yes. there was a time when you were dead. That's right. What? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I know. I'm looking a lot better now. <laughs> uh, yeah, I know. It's right. No, well, this is. I'm, I'm sure that this is referring to the fact that uh, I was mistakenly reported as dead on the BBC website. <laughs> BBC, not yes. even like not. Yeah, I, I know so. it was a BBC website, and um, it just said uh, tributes are pouring in for actor and comedian musician Bill Bailey, who has died at the age of 52, which is really annoying because they, they got the age wrong. Firstly, <laughs> I was so annoyed about that, and they used a weird photo as well. I was thinking, well, no, is this you, the photo? You, tweet, you tweeted oh, this. Oh no! I mean, what is that? I think. Perfect for an obituary. That is, that says, that says, this sucks. <laughs> no, you see. Yeah, that, no, that says sad, isn't it? It's sad, dying. <laughs> yeah, but uh, it was so annoying. <laughs> it was a bit of a shock to read that in the morning on Twitter. <laughs> and what happened was that the actual story was that there was a, 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 a DJ in Kentucky called Bill Bailey who died, and someone on the BBC was watching the news. It was like, I get, I think what happened was it was like middle of the night, and they saw Bill Bailey died, oh, and panicked and put Bill Bailey died and put a photograph up, and then realised it wasn't me, and then panicked again and tried to delete it. By which time, someone had taken a screenshot already and posted it on Twitter, and the, 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 the reaction was. I, was re I woke up in the morning and it said, Bill Bailey, dead, 52. And then my tour manager, who's in the hotel, he phoned me and he said, are you all right? <laughs> <laughs> Which was very sweet, but, you know, well, I'm not dead, so <laughs> I'm not better than dead. I'm here. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, there will be a gig tonight. <laughs> I'm, I'm, guessing, I'm guessing Bill Bailey isn't your real name. No. No. No, it's uh, Mark was the name I was... Uh... <laughs> 
<laughs> yes, there's no pronunciation problems. <laughs> straight. No, I was Chris and Mark, but yeah. there's an old jazz standard song called Won't You Come Home, Bill Bailey. Yeah. So, from a very early age, I was known as Bill, and that's just kind of nickname. But then when it came to your son, it, yeah. it's hard to choose names, I think. It you know, is. It's very hard to choose names. Yeah. So, your son, you went for quite a specific name. Yes, Dax. Yeah. It's a, it's, a, it's a punchy name. Yeah. You know, not, not a, you know, not no. a... I mean, <laughs> you know, it's a... Did you make it up? No. You know, it's, it's a... a <laughs> I just made it up. Got some Scrabble letters and... <laughs> <laughs> Give me a vowel. Oh, what have I got here? <laughs> yeah. oh, no. <laughs> well, it's click on for you. <laughs> no. A lot of people think that I chose it because it's a name in Star Trek, in uh, Deep Space Nine. There's a parasitic slug called <laughs> Dax. What? And a parasitic slug, right. uh, a symbiont, you know. And, um, <laughs> and a lot of people, because I'm a bit of a science fiction fan, they always sort of think that, you know, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. it's not, it's not that at all. It's, a, it's, an, old, it's an old French name, actually. Very nice thing. Thanks very much. Ding drunk is, I think it is a hard It's thing hard. To, yeah. Yeah, because yeah. it, it's easy, easy to, overdo. to overdo it yeah. and do the cliché, the slurring and the... Uh, you, really, because when you are actually drunk, you're not, you're not actually... You're, you're, be, you're enhanced, you know, you're a bit louder, you're a bit... A bit and I actually heard this once, it happened to me, where I went to a party and I, I left with the wrong jacket. And uh, it was a, a, a guy who I knew, Peter, he had the same leather jacket. So we both left and I went, oh, wait, I see a problem here. I, I could, I, I, brilliant, I've got a way out of this. I'll phone my phone with his phone and leave a message and he'll get it and then we'll meet up and get the jackets. So I thought I was being really clever, and I thought I'd left a message, Hello, Peter, Bill here. Yes, I think there's been some sort of misunderstanding with the jackets. Um, <laughs> if we meet up in a couple of days, we'll be able to sort this out. Cheerio, goodbye. And then, about a week later, I heard my own voice on the voicemail of my own phone. And it was just, Peter, 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 we should all hear that once in our lives. <laughs> not me, obviously. Now, uh, Denzel, you're always in great shape, um, but in this movie, I couldn't help but notice, you're slightly... He's gone to see the horrible thing to say. But, uh, yeah, he, he, you know, he, I put on a... F it was intentional! I'm not just going to insult the man. He, he was acting. Yeah, you tried. Yeah, no, I, I mean, we're the, the, one of the first scenes in the movie, uh, I'm, I'm with this young lady, and, and we're naked, and... Uh, and you're selling more and more tickets as a <laughs> Very good. So job. I uh, let it all hang out, we'll say. You know, he just, uh, he's, he's, he's not working out. He's, he's, but are you one of those people, are you one of those annoying people who finds it hard to put on weight? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I can put on weight real easy. In, in fact, for the movie, basically what I did was I would eat, eat late, eat at midnight. You know, have a big meal at midnight. Oh, delicious. Oh, delicious. I loved it. Oh, going to bed full. There's full. nothing better. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh. yeah. I think it's because I'm Irish. Because of the famine, mm. I always think I'm afraid I might starve <laughs> to death in the middle of the night. Get a few carbs in. Yeah. At midnight. Yeah. 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 No, right. absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. The story involving the goose. Yes. No, that's true. That's what happened. That's a, that's a real story. I mean, that was, again, that was like, you know, and again, it's a, I, mean, I may talk about, I mean, I do a lot of work with conservation and animals and wildlife conservation. And sometimes, you know, you, you, you try to do a good thing and, and it backfires, you know. It's like a, it was like a, you know, a, the best intentions and they backfire on you. I was, we were coming back from a dinner, my wife and I, in, in London. And it was very late and I was like two, three o'clock in the morning. We were driving down the Mall in front of Buckingham Palace. And we saw an animal in distress, clearly in distress, at the side of the road. And it was a, a goose. And there's quite a lot of animals around, a lot of geese around there. And it was sort of <laughs> flapping on the, on the road, like clearly a bit in, in distress. So we stopped um, and got out of the car. And, and, and so you know, and my wife was saying, Let's, we must save it. We, you know, we've got to try and save it. And I was a little bit, I was like, you know, half two, come on. I mean, there's no one around. <laughs> you know, maybe just, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> You know, like, really? Yeah. And then I'm not thought, in danger. I can't do that, because it was Valentine's night. And I was thinking, you know, what did you do Valentine's night? Oh, I reversed over a goose. Uh, <laughs> it was a magical night. So, <laughs> so, 
Well, one, we had a blanket in the back of the car, and I wrapped the goose in the blanket, and we put the goose up and put it in the back of the car, and I was just about to close the, the boot, and a gun was held to my head, a cocked pistol yeah. was held to my head. Uh, stop, what are you doing? And it was a, a bunch of plain clothes, like the Royal Protection Officers, and they're all kind of skulking around in the bushes, I guess, you know, <laughs> waiting for some goose-based nonsense to happen, you know, <laughs> goose malfeasance. And uh, he said, what are you doing? And, uh, and I went, oh, uh, a, a, goo a goose. And, <laughs> and I suffered a bit of asthma, and I had an asthma attack, and I started wheezing. I was going, a goose, a goose. <laughs> going, what is it? A goose, it's a goose. <laughs> Um, and I'm thinking, am I going to die? <laughs> this is my last word. <laughs> what? And then he, went, he goes, all right. And the other fellow, there was two of them, and the guy had a, had a pistol, and the goose was under the blanket, so he couldn't see what it was. <laughs> so then the goose's head appeared from under the blanket, <laughs> and the other guy pointed a gun at it. <laughs> What are we going to do? <laughs> Some weird terrorist goose. You know. <laughs> like that. And the guy goes, all right, he goes, show me, show me. Easy, easy. <laughs> so I revealed the goose, and clearly it was a goose. The goose came up like this to face the gun. <laughs> so it was a weird sort of standoff. <laughs> like that. And then, uh, and then we just sort of stood there, like, really, like... <laughs> Happened. You know, that went on for ages. And eventually the first guy did that thing with the, the, you know, the radio. He went, stand down, just a goose. <laughs> I was thinking, stand... But you know, like... Stand down? Who else? Who else was... You know what I mean? We were like snipers trained, like a red dot on me. No, it's a goose, it's a goose. Stand down, stand down. Because <laughs> you, or you like learning new instruments. Yes. So I think you've got a new one with you. I do, what, actually. What, I brought a new this? one with me. Yes. Um, it is... Well, I'll bring it out for you. Oh, yeah. It's, um... It's, it's, it's actually a, a Turkish instrument. It's called a saz. Right? OK. And, uh, it's, it's basically a long-necked lute. And, uh, it's, it's a beautiful thing. <laughs> and it makes a really kind of beautiful Eastern sound, you know? So it's got that kind of feel to it. <laughs> They're off. <laughs> They've started a march. They're leaving the studio. <laughs> <laughs> we will follow you. Yeah. Lead us, Bill. Um, I know, but um, it's got a beautiful sort of tone to it. And actually, um, I was going to play something. Because you're here, Bernie, right, I thought I'd do a little arrangement of a song Right, which you wrote with Elton, right? But I don't think you've ever heard it on the Turkish Saz before. Uh, possibly not. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a candle in the wind because we were talking about it earlier on, and I, I just thought it's. Do you know what? Even though this is a, a three-stringed Turkish instrument, it does actually. It's quite versatile. So something like that sounds quite good. <laughs> Thank you for that.